Welcome back to Mythic Raiding, everyone. Shirley here. And today we're going to take a look at the second boss that you'll probably fight in the new raid, Skolex. So pray to your Wind Fury totems and let's jump right into this one. I'm going to be playing a Night Fey Arms Warrior for this fight using the Dreamweaver Soulbind, just for pure single target damage because that's all that this fight is. And right off the bat here, uh, you might notice a giant uh, counting down weak ore in the middle of my screen that says move in. Uh, if you're playing melee on this fight, 10 of 10 would recommend you pick up this weak aura. I'll link it down below um, after the video goes up so you guys can, can get this. But if you're in melee, you definitely want to be stacking up as a group and then moving every time this cast goes out. Because if you get hit by these uh, blue swirls, it'll leave a blue pool on the ground, which you see on the right side of our stack right there that a couple of people got clipped by it. And what it does is it, it puts a dot on you as well as reducing your haste by like 30% or something for 20 seconds-ish. Uh, obviously pretty bad, it can't be dispelled on Mythic, so don't get hit by it. But inevitably some people probably will get hit by it, and that's where a lot of the difficulty of melee comes into this fight is stacking up and trying to communicate as best as you can to move around any pools that might uh, end up happening. And then the other mechanics coming up here is our range group is baiting and then rotating around the, uh, the left side behind us here. And that's because he's going to cast his, uh, his big cone thing, which will now leave a giant pool on the ground, Wretch here, on Mythic difficulty. And we're all going to gate out and stand on a specific stack point to, you know, bait out his burrow. And that's going to interrupt his wretch cast. That way we don't have to deal with uh, moving out for that. And it also gets us into our next position to rotate the boss around this giant room. So don't be afraid to use it all because you've got plenty of space. And in fact, we could have used even more by the end of this kill. It's a pretty fast fight, but um, as far as arms warriors go, it's pretty standard just burning your cooldowns, you know, as they come up. There's not really too much to think about. Uh, it's pretty simple. Just dodge the wretch every time. In fact, I would, or the wretch anyway, but the pools when they're coming out, just staring at this weak aura to move every time. And hopefully you guys as melee can, you know, all rotate uh, the same direction. That way you're not getting a ton of pools coming out all over the place. Uh, if you do get hit by this thing, it's not the end of the world. You can pop personal, parry for it, spell reflect to reduce some of the magic damage. Uh, you'll probably need a health stone and maybe a pot for it as well, but it's not the end of the world as long as you only get hit by one. You get hit by multiple ones, you're probably going to die. Uh, we're baiting out our second wretch here. I wasn't next to the gateway because it was on the other side of the boss, so I'm going to go ahead and just heroic leap uh, to our stack point here. And it's very much rinse repeat at this point. We're just going to be doing the same thing. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of times where I'm just going to back up off the boss because these pools, the swirls themselves, the hitbox is pretty big. So I would rather just lose a second of uptime rather than risk getting clipped by one of these pools because the haste really sucks, but they're actually pretty dangerous for an arms warrior since we don't have any way to you know, really heal ourselves outside of consumables. So, you know, if you ever do take multiple hits of these, it's uh, it's not good. So I'm just going to be running out and baiting that as much as possible. Uh, one thing, when he does his cone from the wretch there, you'll see that there's like a, a blue patch on the ground that's left temporarily after it, but it's not a big deal. It doesn't actually do any damage. You can immediately move back into the stack point. Um... We also want to be hugging as many of these pools as we can. Uh, anytime that, you know, these do end up getting dropped on the ground here, that way we're not, uh, you know, wasting space. I'm going to go ahead and opt to run into the boss to that get that gate there for our next uh, soak stack here. I'm going to use parry as much as I can for the burrow because that's where the biggest burst of damage is. You don't actually parry the melee hit or anything, but, you know, it is what it is. So we get back down to about 20% here into execute phase. Unfortunately, I think I actually get clipped by one of these pools as things get a little bit more dicey at the end here. And while you can stack up um, to help bait these pools, they do come out randomly at the end of the day. So it is possible that, you know, you can just get unlucky and get clipped by one of these. So you just got to keep your eyes out for it all the time and just stare at this weak aura. Um, it's, it's pretty important. 
Unfortunately, I think it was, uh, okay, it's not here. I'm gonna go ahead and use my last set of cooldowns during the execute phase, trying to stand on my Dreamweaver pool right there. It was kind of hard to see the swirl because my Dreamweaver uh, circle is overlapping it, so I do get clipped by one right at the end of the fight here. Unfortunate, but I'm gonna go ahead and use um, my rally and health stone and whatnot as it uh, as this dot kind of hurts here at the end. And uh, that's about it for Skolex. Panic, throw up my uh, character screen, you know, intimidate the boss with my stats a little bit. And down goes Skolex. Pretty simple fight. If you have any questions about it, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.